So just behind my antenna field, we've got uh, some trees and I want to make a horizontal loop because they have some great properties and a little bit of gain, particularly if it's triangular. Now a horizontal loop displays ooh, 150, 200 ohms horizontal now, right? <laughs> Depending on the height above ground. And I found a really crappy old four to one ballon here, which we're not gonna use, but I found it in the workshop. Maybe we should take it apart one day, but it sounds a bit crunchy. But if you remember when Mike was up last year, we made a four to one ballon, it was a high power one. And uh, so I'm gonna be using that as the ballon now. Why does a horizontal triangular loop have some interesting properties? I like them because they're multiband, all right? And a triangle, a full wavelength at the lowest frequency you're operating on has some really cool properties. So if we've got a feed point here and we've got our triangle, which on a 40 meter band, it's gonna be a third of a wavelength per leg, all right? And we get some interesting gain going that way, even a modest one. There's gain going in other directions as well, but it's, it's loops display some quite interesting receive properties. They are generally considered a quiet antenna. All right, then there's for four to one. Now I've got some tricks here. We will be building this, but this is the introduction to the build because there's some tips along the way that I have considered. Now, the first thing is, if you're in a heavy, densely populated tree world, it's very difficult getting your wire through the trees. I wanna make this as easy as possible. So I'm looking about a seven meter height, which I think is 23, 24 feet, something like that. And I think what we'll use, I'll just use either one of those little mini catapults. I don't want the thing going forever though, because I want it horizontal. I don't want it going up and then back down. So we'll, we'll find a way of hooking it over and threading it through this forest, which is a little bit jumbled up. It is behind the antenna field, you know, where I play with Django and all that sort of stuff. Most of the time, remember, the antenna field is the dog field, okay? Because the radials for that big vertical are pinned out on the floor. In fact, you might be able to see on this shot a camera. Now that little rear link camera, I'm live streaming right now, actually, as a little bit of a test because we get blue tits and squirrels and all sorts of things. And I like to sit here doing my email in the morning before I get to the factory. And I just like to get an idea of what's going on. I could just dial in remotely to my PC, but yesterday I just started live streaming this. At night, it's a bit dark, but early in the morning, it's quite interesting because uh, the light changes very slightly and you can see the lambs and everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go back to where we're gonna go. Right, so why interesting properties? So apart from the fact, remember a dipole resonates on every other harmonic, if you like. So if you've got something at 7.1 megahertz, you will find roughly, you've got end effects. I've done a video all about that, but roughly you'll get well, you won't get 14.2, that's the point, on a dipole. But you'll get 21.03 or something, and, and onwards, every other harmonic, whereas a loop gives you the intermediates as well. I don't know why, right? It's all about the bananas, okay? But I've got some tricks I'm gonna discuss with you in a minute, but let's first of all look at these very interesting properties. Now, this isn't a very high loop. 23 feet is manageable. And I had one in the backyard, the back garden here for years on two banister poles, 16 foot long. And I had a ball because I could get on every band. I think I could get on 30 by hitting the ATU button, you know. Let me quickly draw um, X, Y. Let me quickly draw this antenna, which is going to look something like, oh, I don't know, something like, I should have done this earlier, so it's 12 meters. Oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. So I'm not worried about the impedes. We know that four to one balance is gonna work. What I'm interested in is the far field plot. Where is our RF going? And as I thought, it's just looking like a really nice bubble of RF like this. 
So good. So that's fine. So for daytime work, I'll be able to have a ball with that. Blasting out of 40 metres, because I quite like my daytime 40. You know, it's, it's no DX during the day. There is early morning and late at night, but not during the day so much. So that's fine. I talked to you about these interesting properties. So if we go to 14 point, I don't know where, we would have to tinker with it in the field. Here we are. Look, the impedance has gone up now, 272. So we would need the 4 to 1 balance. But that doesn't affect the far field plot. All right, let's have a look at the far field plot. Now, can you see a little bit of fun and game starting to happen? You see how opposite the feed point, there's a little bit of gain. That doesn't need to be a lot, but just a little bit is good fun. Big triangles and high triangles, they develop a huge amount of gain. But if you remember, I like to benchmark things at about five degrees off the horizon because that's hard to achieve. And I'm just interested to know how much gain are we getting on 20 metres compared to a stock vertical? I'm getting minus 6.6. .6. So I'm 1 dB off, one and a, uh, yeah, about 1 dB less on this than a straight vertical. Hello. But on receive, it might be very nice. OK, so that's on 14. Now if we go to 21. 0.3 again, uh, 100 ohms now. Different uh, frequencies change. Change in peen slightly. That's why 4 to 1 balance kind of works on average across them all. But anyway, we can see now that the gain pancakes down a bit. Look at this, nice. Minus two there, so about three to four dB better. In fact, it's almost omnidirectional. It looks really nice. If we fire up the far field plot, you know, the fancy one, we can see where our gain's going. That's quite pleasant, isn't it? Considering it's 40 something meters of wire, we'll cover that in a minute, getting a nice bit of a pancake going. And then on 28, we'll start to see a lobe developing. The impedance has gone up now, 192. Opposite the feed point, which is to our left, look. See it there, just a bit of gain over here. So I want to face mine to America, because I like talking to my American friends. And if we do the elevation at five degrees off the horizon, and have a look there, it says 1.4. So this is good, this is 6, 7 dB better. This is what I'm thinking of. It's achievable, right? It's not too high. It's cheap. And all you need to buy or make is a four to one balance. You need about 40 meters of wire. By the way, if this is a lot higher and a lot bigger, right? Really interesting things start happening. 50-ish megahertz. We may get a tune. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit bit out. But uh, you'll, oops, you'll see what happens when we go to the far field plot. See this lobe developing over here. Interesting, isn't it? So a big loop, like a 160 meter loop at 18, 20 meters, 60 foot. You get this on 20 meters, by the way. Fantastic. Anyway, let's have a look at construction because I want to use the Kevlar cord wire and Kevlar cord wire is difficult to join because once you cut the strands of the Kevlar, you either got to put two egg connectors together you know what I mean? Oh, that becomes a nightmare. So I'm going to zoom into this little bit here. Just make sure I'm recording. I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and put a thimble. Thimble, is it? Some words just sound funny when you say it. You know what I mean? A thimble. So how are we going to put a thimble? So just like a doublet has a thimble. All right. And I made a video about that, so you'll know what I mean. So the thimble is kind of that shape, isn't it? So we'll go around here, down a bit, and then I'm going to droop to one of these because I'll put my four to one balance here and the same the other side. Okay, four to one there. And then some paracord or similar from here to here. Because when I start cutting this, because I'm going to make it too long, I do definitely on this wire don't want to start joining it. That's the point. So it just means I can trim the Kevlar back like this. 
and shorten the paracord without having to rejoin it. Now I could make this, oh, probably, you know, 1.5 meters, six feet long, this paracord to give me the, the depth. And then on each corner, we'll put another one of these thimbles as well. So I can do that in the workshop. Uh, and then we put some heat shrink there. Same here, one of these thimbles there. And a little bit of heat shrink to hold it all together so it doesn't fly apart. Seven meters, that's one. If I can get it higher, I will, but I've got a funny feeling getting it higher might be fun. And just getting an extra couple of dB on 20. But on the other hand, having a lovely daytime 40 meter might be really nice to do. I'll see if I can dig out the uh, banister rails that I did. I had that up here in the backyard for years. In fact, it might have even been that four to one ballon. And I was getting a good match, you know, from uh, like four to, uh, 7.1, 14.2, all the harmonics, and they work fine. Nice bandwidth, but it's great. If you've got a two VFO radio, you could plug this into your second VFO and you have a nice stereo sound. So there we are. Let me know in the comments if you've built one of these before, if you've got experience of this. I have. I liked it a lot. I just like to compare notes. But in the meantime, have a lovely day. Thanks for joining me. We will be building this. So remember to hit the subscribe button, all the jibbly june, all the clicks. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.